What's up, Disney Nuts here. How are you guys doing? As you can see, today we're at Epcot. I'm gonna show you how I photographed and edited this. Now, obviously here, there's a little bit of Photoshop magic here, but don't worry, we're gonna start with really simple steps. So we're gonna go ahead over there and walk over to where the fountain is. We set up our tripod, set up the camera, and we're gonna take a couple of shots. One is gonna be the fountain on the bottom. We're gonna get that really nice glossy, glossy look of an ND filter. And then we're gonna take another one of the monorail passing on top. Then we're gonna head home. We're gonna put this all into Photoshop and I'll show you a little magic so you can make a couple of cool photos and a couple of cool effects. So let's head over to the fountain. Now, if you haven't been to Epcot recently, the Leave a Legacy here on the right side has been removed. And these are actually gonna be set up outside um, so they're not going to be destroyed or anything like that, just going to be moved. Now, they've only moved one side, which looks weird because obviously the other side is still there. So uh, hopefully they uh, move them so it balances uh, this out. Okay, as we come up to the fountain, there's a couple of angles that we can use. One being the right side or the left side. Now, we're going to actually pick the left side. And the reason for that is that we got a really good clear view of the monorail um, with no trees and stuff like that. If we actually go to this side, um, we got some trees in the back. And it's going to make it a little a bit harder to uh, do the post editing when we get to the part of the Photoshop. Now you can see that I got the camera right here on the tripod. And if you look at the image, you'll see that I got the um, fountain as well as the top of the rocks. And right there on the edge, I got the monorail track. So this is the spot that we want to set. The next thing we're going to do, we're actually going to take two shots. And we're going to take the first shot being the water, which is going to be the bottom part here. And we're going to put our ND filter and that will allow us to get a nice smooth glossy uh, look to the water. And this is probably the darkest one that I have. It's actually an ND1000. And like I said, this is like a, like a sunglasses for your camera. So this is what we're going to be using for the first shot to be able to freeze all this water really nice and cool. 160 seconds of a second, you see it's pitch black. So we're going to go ahead and adjust the shutter speed all the way until we start seeing the image come into you know as perfect exposure and you can look at that by the little item on the bottom here which is exposure indicator if i press my shutter speed halfway you'll see how it how it um uh, pops up now you see that white square there and that is actually where the camera is doing its focusing and the reason that i want it on the bottom because i want it to be on the water i don't want it to be on the top part because obviously if there's some sun, sunlight on the top it's going to make the photo come over exposed and the water will not come out. So let's go ahead and adjust it a little more. There we go. And I think that looks fine. It's a little over, but the water looks perfect. Let's go ahead and take that photo. There it is. Okay, 2.5 seconds. Gives us a nice glossy look on the water. Now we're going to go ahead and take off the ND filter and we're going to wait for the monorail to come by and take the photo. Now again, very important, uh, make sure that the focusing point like I have here is on the top which is where the monorail will be coming by. And we want to make sure also that we do not move the camera. Here it comes. Okay, we got our shots. Let's see what we got. Okay, so now the next step is we're going to head home. We're going to put these two images inside the computer and then we're going to do a little bit of Photoshop uh, magic on the top. So uh, let's head home and do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit those images. Now you can see here I have the first one, which is the one with the glossy water on the bottom. And you'll see the second one that we took here with the uh, monorail on the top. Now I did edit these with some basic settings, nothing fancy. So if you want to do that before uh, we combine them, then you can go ahead and do it. Now don't put too much... Um, you know too much into it because basically we're going to be putting some more stuff on top but since they are raw images we do at least need to put something to uh you know a little a little at least something to you know spice it up a little bit so um i just have some basic settings here nothing fancy now i'm going to go ahead and select the two images i can do it with the control key or either the shift key i'm going to right click on any of the two of them come here under edit and i'm going to go to open as layers in photoshop Okay, so the image is now loaded and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select the two of them and we're gonna make sure that they're perfectly aligned. And I do that by selecting the two, come here under edit and I go to auto align layers. I can leave this as auto, I'll hit okay and let Photoshop do its magic. 
Now, um, it'll fill out some of the areas that it wasn't able to mix and match, like here, and then put here a little bit. Uh, we'll see some of that that wasn't available because I touched the camera when I took the ND filter off, which is fine, and that's normal. And the way we fix that, we're just actually going to crop it. We're going to crop the two images here at the same time. Hit the cropping tool right here, and we'll just bring this down a little bit, move this a little to the left, a little bit to the right, and on the bottom. And that's going to get rid of all these little lines and all that other stuff here that we see. I hit enter or the check mark and presto, there we go. We propped our image, no problem. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is that since we have behind uh, the first image, um, now if you've worked in Photoshop before, you know that the images are shown from top to bottom. And if I hit here, I could see, I could turn on and off with this little eye what's on it. And you can see that obviously the top image is 100% normal, which means that it's not going to show anything that's going through it. But we're going to use a tool called Mask, which is down here. And that, if wherever we paint black, is going to let, uh, let through the image on the top. So I'm going to make sure this is black here on the foreground color. Select my brush. It doesn't need to be big, but it needs to be pretty much to cover the whole monorail. Now, I'm going to go ahead and mask the area that I want this to be, you know, seen from the top of this image all the way through the back. But I'm actually going to do the whole area and you're going to see why. So I'm going to go ahead and paint here. And there's our monorail. Now, you can see obviously this is coming through, uh, you know, from the image before because it was darker when I took the image of the monorail as to when I took it without. No problem. We'll just go ahead and paint the whole rest of the image here. And um, that way um, it looks balanced and doesn't look weird with the uh, with the uh, monorail there. Okay, so now we got those uh, images mixed. Looks pretty good. Looks, uh, we got the nice glossy water on the bottom and we got the, uh, the monorail here in the middle. No problem. So let's say we want to add in those lightning bolts. Now what we're going to do, we're going to actually add another layer. Just as these images are taken one layer each, we want to add a blank one here on the top. And we're going to go ahead and select one of the images that we downloaded from this site, which is an awesome site. You can find all types of images on the site, so feel free to check them out. They're all royalty free, so you can use them with commercial purposes uh, without any issues of getting sued or anything like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick the image that I've downloaded and drag it here onto the screen. Now, depending on the size, it's depending how it'll look, and you'll see automatically comes up with these crosshairs. And I can grab any of these uh, little dots here and make the image bigger or smaller. Now, I do on this version of Photoshop have to hit the Shift key so it um, I can adjust it, you know, without having it to auto adjust itself depending on the edges. So hitting the Shift key allows me to stretch it more than I normally would. Now, to where to put the image exactly? What I like to do is I like to bring the opacity down a little bit and that way I see what's going on behind because if the image you downloaded has, you know, like streets and stuff like that, you want that stuff to come out. And we're going to hit okay, a little bit more. I hit enter and there's our image. Now obviously this looks pretty terrible uh, because we want to be able to blend it in which is where we're going to be using another mask tool. You got it just like we did before. So we're going to hit the mask tool. It's going to bring up this uh, white space again. But instead of using the brush, we're going to use the gradient tool, which is right here on the left, which is using the G key. And what that does is that it'll make it uh, show up from brighter to darker. So that way it gives a natural effect that you'll see the full sky on the top and the blending of the monorail on the bottom. Now make sure here this is also selected from uh, dark to white, which is really important. And to make sure that this is black to white as well. And then just by pressing our mouse and leaving it pressed, you'll see this arrow pop up. And wherever I let it go is where the gradient will start to cre be created. And uh, you got to play with it a couple times. And a little more. Now what I'm trying to do here is actually show the monorail as much as possible. So it's not hidden behind the clouds. But as you see, um, we're going to get these spaces here that are blue. We're going to fix that. Don't worry. But I want that you want to try to make sure that at least the monorail is 100% viewable. Okay, so there we go. Now with that, we have um, we have our clouds here. Now we want to fill out these pockets so it looks somewhat natural. And the way we do that is you got it with another layer. And I'm going to select the layer button, which is right here, and that's going to bring up another blank canvas, if you want to call it. And we're going to fill in these areas with a similar color. Now the cool thing of Photoshop, you can actually hit the Alt key. And it'll bring up automatically if you leave it pressed, it brings up the, the dropper. And I can click the left mouse button and it'll show here what is the color that underneath it. So I want to pick something that's really similar. 
and let's see this color is fine and that will automatically change my foreground color which you see down here to the color that we just used now I'm going to select the brush which is the B brush which is the letter B and I'm going to go ahead and paint in these areas now it's going to look a little weird and we're going to adjust that with our blending modes just in a second but I just want to show you how it looks when we paint it without any options in there okay there we go I'll paint up this area here this here and I want to make sure to paint in these areas here as well I'll paint in this area as well now I'm making my brush bigger and smaller using the bracket keys the left bracket key makes it smaller the right bracket key makes it bigger and here's then we're going to make sure that we're selecting the layer that we're working on we're going to pick overlay and that what's going to do it's going to mix and match um, our that layer with the one underneath it now there's tons of blending modes here I just basically experiment which one looks better and which one looks good which one looks you know it, it's just a matter of playing with them there's so many different options here that you have inside Photoshop that I just found that overlay for, overlay for me works the best as you can see it blends in perfectly okay and that is there right there our image now um, there's a couple of more things you can do to it and I'm just going to keep on going you guys can stop here if you want but I'm going to go ahead and add in three more things one being I want to be able to change the tone of the whole image to simulate what is the pinkish color that we have up here and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and select another layer and I already got the color selected from the previous one again it's already that now um, I'm going to fill the whole screen with the color now there's two ways to do that you can actually paint it or you can hit the alt key and the delete key on the Windows computer and it will fill automatically the image. Now obviously here we have everything painted because it's 100% on normal. And here we go again with our blending modes and we change the overlay, we change it to overlay and I'm gonna bring down this time the opacity so it's not as pronounced as the other ones. And here we go, I'll leave it maybe 11% sounds good and that way this bottom part has that nice pinkish effect. Maybe a little more, here we go. So if I turn it on, you can see the difference. That way, the water has like the pink sky colors coming from the skies. Okay, so that's the image that we uh, have so far. If this is great for you, awesome. I'm going to bring this back into Lightroom because there's two more things that I want to do it uh, to the photo so it gives a little bit more natural effect even though there's nothing natural about this photo. So we're going to close this. It's going to send us back into Lightroom. Now, if you want to go ahead and edit this photo, you can. Many people like to go in and do other stuff to it and, you know, tweak it. Maybe bring down the highlights, blends the colors in a little bit more. I'm going to select here the gradient tool. And what I want to do is that I want to make the top of the skies darker. As it goes down, it's going to look lighter on the bottom. So selecting that gradient tool and selecting exposure, I'm going to press the button here on the mouse and drag it down. And you can see where the top part is going to be darker we can put it you know saturate the colors a little more on the top and leave it not as saturated on the bottom again all personal preferences how you like to edit your photos um, you can even go the other way if you want to make the top brighter like that where it looks like the sky is lighting up which I think actually looks looks pretty good this way um, but I'm gonna bring it down okay now the second thing I'm going to do is that since there's light here coming in this direction I want to simulate um, the fountain where this part is brighter and this part is darker and I'm going to do using it the same tool which is the gradient I'm going to hit the new button again and I'll hit the gradient tool and I'm going to do it from the bottom up this time and what that's going to do is that the bottom part is going to be darker and it's going to be brighter on the top so I'm going to bring this down a little here a little bit we can even move this in inward and that gives the effect that the light coming off of the lightning is only you know brightening up this area but this part down here it's going to stay dark because the lightning uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, you know provide the brightness down here okay and there we go guys there's our image now go ahead and play with it and again nobody's seen the original image so what I'm showing here is the final product and if people like it great if not, then great as well okay so there's our image guys Okay guys, so that's it here from Epcot. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial of how to create really cool effects on top of the monorail here at Epcot. Now feel free to experiment with different types of, um, of skies and lightnings and stuff like that, as well as the other two components of the photo. For example, the, you know, the fountain, if you want to change it to something else, or if you want to change the monorail to something else. Have fun with it, guys. That's what makes Disney photography fun. So if you like what you saw and you want to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified. That way I can continue bringing these videos to you guys. Until then guys, stay awesome. See ya.